Dr. Castillo, thank you very much. Uh, my presentation today is uh, Sustainable Tourism uh, Development. And um, we'll look at two main variables on this uh, research. And the first one is to look at uh, tourism. And um, the tourism part will be looking at the total tourism growth, the total tourism share of uh, GDP, uh, total tourism growth, and the um, share of GDP, and the notes export of share growth. And then from the, the second variable, uh, poverty, we'll be looking at the poverty rate, <coughs> change in poverty, and the, um, the error terms, and the parameters. Um, throughout uh, Belize history, we have had three poverty census. Uh, the first one was in 1995, which is 33%. Um, the second one was in 2002, which is 33%. Uh, and in 2009, 41%. Uh, the following uh, census was to be done in 2016, but uh, it was not conducted. Hence, no, uh, we don't have any data available for that, uh, for that year. No? And, um, so we are looking forward to have that data prob probably in 2020 or 2021. So this is the uh, system that they use, the methodology that was used to measure poverty here in, uh, in Belize up to 2009, okay? And um, we have to, uh, let me establish that there are many methodologies, uh, or there is more than one methodology um, that the country or you can use to measure poverty. Um, the World Bank, for example, they had uh, the measure poverty according to income up to that date in 2009. The United Nations uh, measure poverty uh, in a multidimensional approach, no? But this was up to uh, what they use up to 2009. <coughs> so, uh, a little background. In 2010, after the 2009 uh, data came out where Belize poverty was at 41%, uh, Minister, uh, Prime Minister of Belize, uh, Dean Barrow, and uh, Honorable Manuel Heredia, who is the Minister for Tourism, um, they made and they, um, they actually adapted the pro poor tourism in order to, to use tourism as a way to alleviate poverty. As uh, the data shows, it was a, already in the increase. So the executive summary, um, the research uh, study key themes in the pro poor tourism development deviate, particularly in terms of the poor population involvement in tourism related activities in Belize, and the use of value chain analysis to understand the involvement. And the research objective is to identify and understand the, link, the linkage, linkages between the local government, the local economy, and tourism in ways that expand economic benefits and opportunities for poor people with an intent to alleviate poverty. Uh, the literature review, we can clearly see in the literature review that uh, many sectors, um, Tourism is a system that is impacting several sectors of Belize economy, which can gen generate foreign exchange and employment. It is important to highlight that the tourism industry is number one foreign exchange earner in Belize at this moment. And um, it also uh, is a mechanism that is being used to generate uh, uh, creation of employment. No? Uh, so hypothesis, I use three hypotheses for this research. And the hypothesis one is tourism activities reduce poverty by increasing income in a population that is socially and culturally poor in Belize. Hypothesis two, there is a positive relation between tourism and the local small agro producers. When we talk about small agro producers, are those that are still using the MILPA system 
and they haven't moved to the mechanic, mechanical system. And then hypothesis three, uh, there is a positive relationship between the tourism industry and entrepreneurs. And when we're talking about entrepreneurs here too, we are looking at the most likely at the startups or small, medium-sized business. The methodology, uh, the research investigated, investigates, collected, and analyzed data using a mixed method approach. Uh, both quantitative and qualitative methods of data collection and analysis were used in the attempt to answer the research question. I found, uh, I found out that it was very important that uh, the mixed method approach uh, was the one that I will adopt as um, I had to do data analysis, but at the same time, I had to apply the observation. Uh, the combination of the approaches can improve the validity of the research, and it has the research findings. And that's according to Finn, Elliot White, and Walton, 2000. So, the new method, whenever I refer to poverty null, I refer to uh, using this methodology here. So my research, any time that you hear poverty, I use this methodology, which was uh, done by Alkire Foster, uh, is a methodology, um, and she works at Oxford University. And um, they use OFI, which is the Oxford Poverty Human Index, and that is uh, a methodology that uh, has been used by the United Nations, and in October of 2018, the World Bank signed into it too. So from now on, both the United Nations and the World Bank will be using uh, this methodology to measure poverty. As is Belize is adopting this methodology as well, as we will have to look at the three um, dimensionals, no? which is the multidimensional poverty index. So they will no longer be measuring poverty just by income, but by the three dimensions, which is health, education, and living standard. And each one of them has um, different points that they will add into it, like health, nutrition, and child mortality. Uh, education, uh, years of schooling and school attendance, living standard, uh, cooking fuel, sanitation, water, electricity, floor, and assets. So, uh, Belize uh, is actually the, the Ministry of Human Development, um, which I am uh, I'm part of that, um, of that team. Um, this is the new method that, we, that will be used in Belize, as it's being used already. It was used already in Mexico and El, El Salvador. And um, this will give us a better assessment of where our poverty is in Belize. So discussion of data, we will look at the overnight and cruise arrivals that's going into the, into the tourism uh, part, tourism expenditures, uh, employments in the tourism industry, and comparison of employments among other industries within Belize. No? And so um, one interesting point here is that the blue section here is the overnight tourism. Overnight tourism in Belize uh, in 2017 uh, surpassed the 400,000 um, uh, arrivals uh, overnight tourists, you know? And each one of, of them stayed an average of 6.8 night. That is the average of a tourist uh, who stays in Belize. And then the, the red section um, talks about the cruise arrival, okay? However, uh, the cruise arrivals they, in 2017, they uh, had about 1.4 million uh, tourists uh, in 2017. I know 2018, it went up. Um, however, one of the things that we can see is that the cruise arrival have a bigger impact into uh, money going directly into people's hands, into the locals. And so, the crews uh, have actually created a, a, an impact on them, uh, on the local people, which have helped us to appreciate that the ones in blue, even though they are living, it's about 88% of the total expenditures comes from the overnight, but 
overnight tourists. However, um, there is a leakage of money because uh, if you're going to a resort, UPA with your credit card, and if you are in the United States, you don't know to which bank account that is going to. So you can go to in Europe, Caymans, whatever. It doesn't necessarily have to come to Belize, no. When we look at employment in the tourism industry, uh, we can see one of the things that we see here is that um, the Belize, uh, the tourism in Belize or the uh, tourism industry is highly dependent on the United States economy. So whenever the United States economy is doing good, we will be doing good. But whenever they're doing bad, our economy will do bad as well. It's directly affected. And we can see that in 2009, 2010, when the economic recession, the data uh, tell us that we had a decrease on employment. Okay? So we are directly affected uh, on that part. Now when we compare the four strongest industries that I consider in Belize, uh, such as agriculture, uh, fishing and aquaculture, construction, accommodation and food services, uh, we can see how the agriculture in 2013 uh, was a little bit over 15,000 or 15,000. Then 2014 it started to go up. 2015 it was about the same as 2014. Then it started to come down in 2016 and 2017. So you can see a decrease after 2015. Now when we look at uh, accommodation and food service, as that's how the, um, this data came from the Social Security Board. And the direct employment into tourism, they actually have a, a, a account for it as accommodation and food service. So we can see that in 2013, it was here a little bit over 10,000. Then it had an increase uh, in 2014, 2015 a slight increase, 2016 a slight increase, 2017 a slight increase. If you look at it, it's the only industry that's having a slight increase when we measure it from the employment standpoint of view. No? The other industries, they're either decreasing or stagnant in generating, uh, uh, generating of jobs. Results, uh, travel and tourism generated uh, 14,934 jobs out of 104,683. So the 104,683 is the total amount of jobs that Belize create. Insure in, in jobs, these are the ones that contribute to um, to, um, to social security, okay? And this was in 2017. Uh, six, after my analysis, I compare, uh, and this is uh, from the standpoint of employment, 60% uh, of the industries in Belize, uh, employments are stagnant, not increasing, or decreasing, okay? The tourism industry accounts for 14.3% of Belize total employment and contribute 23.1% of Belize GDPs. And 76% of jobs were created in Kikaka, San Pedro, and Plasencia. And this is the other point, that the tourism industry have created a lot of jobs, however, it is just in certain sectors. It's not uh, something that is uh, uh, equally distributed countrywide. The results ensure that tourism employment is growing by 3.6% per annum, Tourism is not widespread to all areas in the country, therefore the poor have to migrate to tourism sectors, which means that if you're looking for a job and you live in an area that tourism is not being practiced, then you have to migrate to one of those uh, areas. Startup entrepreneurs are providing service to the tourism industry across Belize, who see the effects of tourism within their business. The small agro producers believe that they are not enjoying the top dollars that tourism pay for food at restaurants. Um, and one of the interesting part is that the farmers, uh, for example, uh, if you produce a pineapple in the southern part of the country, you will sell that pineapple for $2. But by the time it reaches San Pedro, it's at $6, $7. So there is a middleman who, in one day, he is generating about 5 to $6, while the farmer, who takes about a year with his work and investing in all the fertilizer, insecticide, pesticides, to produce, he only produces at $2. Or, or his sale is at $2 for one, you know? Meanwhile, the program is $6. Uh, Belize's current economy is not conductive to eradicate poverty. And that's my conclusion. This low growing economy and high debts prohibit spending uh, on social service and investment in human capital. 
Belize resources and economic sectors alone will not resolve issues of poverty. Furthermore, an increase in poverty can be contributed to the fact that Belize is the Central American country that has had the most immigrants since the early 1980s, and permanent immigration flow in 2011 stood at about 4.3% per thousand population, about the same relative level as Barbados. Uh, the foreign-born population in 2013 represented 15.3% of the total Belize population, the highest in Central America, with Costa Rica holding a distant second place at 8.6%. Uh, the outlook uh, for tourism is positive, and the service sector is therefore expected to continue being the main driver for the domestic economy. Arrivals of the over tourists uh, tourist are projected to keep growing with increased digital market efforts and year leave capacity. As a result of the positive predicting insured employment, you see an increase of about 3 to 5 percent per annum in the next five years in comparison to 2017. Okay, uh, hypothesis one was accepted. That is the relation between the poor and the uh, tourism, uh, in, where tourism generates jobs. Uh, hypothesis two was rejected, and that's the relationship with the agro producers and tourism, and tourists. And hypothesis, hypothesis three was accepted, as um, you can see that there is a relation between entrepreneurs and the tourism industry. My recommendations is. The need to attract tourism from other parts of the world is important since the tourism industry is currently dependent on the American market. What happened in 2009, 2010, we have to find ways to avoid it. We cannot be dependent only in one economy. If, American econo if the economy of the United States is not healthy, uh, we cannot depend that it will affect us as well. No? So we have to see how we can, uh, the tourism industry, get more tourists from different parts of the world. Poverty in Belize can only be reduced with increase in the local industries, attract foreign investors, invest in developing entrepreneurs, and with the help of international donors to invest in human capital through education. Education is very important in this part. Improve the linkage between agro-producer and, and tourism in order for the farmers to enjoy full benefit from their product. I think the government need to find that link and to see how they can get top dollars for the agro-producers as we are not in position to let go. Our economy is not in a position to let go from the agro-producers. Uh, the government's plan to eradicate poverty should be clearly communicated to the public. This should be a strategic plan that we that each actor uh, in this country who is uh, willing to contribute should, should know about it, you know. And then um, governments, NGOs, and the private sector need to work hand in hand in order to achieve the objective of eradicating poverty. And the need to improve the way other industries target pro poor activities or develop pro poor activities within their industry in order to target poverty alleviation. Belize must accelerate national income growth, ameliorate the growing wealth disparity. And that are some of my references, so thank you.